What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we've got a little story time. We haven't had story time in a while. And this uh, video piggybacks off of my uh, Decline of Civilization video where, you know what, there's an overwhelmingly positive reaction to a negative subject, which, you know, goes to show a lot of people are thinking the same things that I'm saying, but they're not saying it. You know, they're, you know, after someone says it, then they come out and say it. And there's a lot of people on there that were bullied. You know, there's a few, few people on there like, violence is not the answer. Okay, yeah, well, you're fucking prey. All right, well, I'm not fucking prey. All right, when I go to the fucking mall at night or I go on the fucking metro at night or I go anywhere at night where you may not even fucking venture to step out, I don't feel fucking scared. I'm not fucking the type of person that's going to fucking sit back and go, well, I don't want to do anything because I'm scared of violence. I'm not going to go over there because it could be somebody that might want to hurt me. Fuck that. I'm going to go wherever I want, whenever I want. Obviously, I put myself in danger in places that I really shouldn't be in, but I'm not going to fucking live my life scared or not worry about fighting back because it's not the answer. Bullshit. You know, fighting is not the answer, but fighting back and standing up for yourself is the answer 100% of the time. So if you don't like it, fuck off. Plain and simple. Now, today's story time <laughs> is, there's two parts to the story time, and it's about bully stuff, which you guys may not know, some of you may and some of you may not know, is before, I guess it was like my tweens, which is when you're like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, I was the same height I am now, weighed 135 pounds, between 130, 135 pounds, so I was about over 100 pounds lighter than I am right now, and although I was muscular, like I was lean, I wasn't shredded, okay, so I mean, I was still growing, my um, I wasn't working out with weights or anything like that. And the first part was, I think I was about 12 years old. And I got jumped in the bathroom by three guys. Okay, in Rhode Island we call it the lavatory. Not the laboratory, the lavatory, L-A-V, the lav. I got jumped by three kids over. And you know what, to this day I still don't know what that bullshit was about. One of them was a senior, one of them was my age, but the size of a senior. And one of them was just this little fucking pussy who was hanging around with them, who was a younger kid. And... I remember, I, I didn't really get hurt, but I remember just getting blasted from all different fucking sides and just backing up and trying to fucking stand my ground. And the principal came in, he grabbed us, well, he grabbed me and brought me into the um, office. I think those kids took off running. So I was sitting in the office. And like within minutes, my cousin Christopher was down there, the one who passed away in the car accident you guys know about. They actually went into class and got him because they know him, they know his reputation, know how he is. And they know once he found out, he would probably literally in the middle of school walk into these kids' classrooms and beat the shit out of them in the middle of the classroom. So they wanted me and him in the office to talk this over and sent us both home that day right then and there. Well, lo and behold, we're driving home, me, Christopher, and one of his friends, and we see two of the kids. He jumps out of the car, fucking beats the shit out of both of them, and tells them, every single time I fucking see you, whether it's in school, out of school, whatever, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's what he tells them. From now on, the rest of your life, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. To, t to say that things changed at that point, that, you know, those kids left me alone, well, they did. You know, one of them quit school and didn't even fucking come back. He turned out to be a complete fucking weirdo asshole who joined the fire department later and then was caught setting fires. Okay, he was like a volunteer fireman setting fires so he could be the one who showed up first to put them out. Okay, so don't tell me that this motherfucker, he definitely needed his bell rung and he wasn't one of the ones that Christopher beat up, but... This is the type of mentality that you're dealing with, okay? So people to say like, oh, you know, school ends and later on real life. Real life, look what happened to this kid. Okay, he deserved to get beating after beating after beating, then fucking arrested and locked up and never let out. And I've told Kerry so many times, I said, I hope to fucking God, I pray to fucking God, you know, that, and I'm not even a religious guy at all, that I run into this motherfucker somewhere, someday, sometime. Because I don't care if it's been 25 years. I owe that motherfucker a shot in the goddamn jaw. Being the size that I am now for what he did to me then. And I don't give a fuck. I'll hold that grudge till the day I fucking die. People, Jerry, it's not worth it. Fuck you. I'll do what I want to do and I'm happy about it. I'll be happy as a pig and fucking shit rolling around on my back when I give that kid a shot in the forehead. Now he's a guy. A motherfucker, a shot in the jaw because someone fucking needs it. And maybe somebody has beaten him up by then, by now. But bottom line is, I feel like I owe him and I hope to God I get that day someday to fucking give it back to him. But they didn't bother me. Another story time, but this is like another piece of it, another bullying thing. And I might have told this story before, so I don't know, maybe... You, I know I, I recorded it, I don't think I actually put it up. Because I have so many videos I've lost. Um, I, I don't even remember what it was about. It was something about that whole thing, though. It was 
leading from that, and there was like the younger kid who had another friend who was big and that was his age. And he was like, I'm gonna fucking kick your ass after school, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, fucking chirping. He was a big fucking kid, too. And I was like, that movie, Three O'Clock High, I'm like watching the clock. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. So I fucking get my backpack after school and I'm walking out to the bus and I'm like looking around, there's nobody there. And I'm like, hey, bro. Hey, buddy. I'm like, fuck, I get on the bus and I feel fucking, I'm sitting against the window, I feel fucking slap. I turn around and look, and it's that big kid outside. He's like, you fucking running away, punk. Fuck you, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. And he's like fucking making this big thing. And the kids on the bus are like, holy shit. And everybody outside the bus is like, oh, fuck, you know, he's going to kick Jerry's ass. Wow. And the bus pulls away, and I'm like, fuck. So the next day comes, and I see him in the morning, and he's like fucking, and we're in school. He's like, when school gets out in that fucking parking lot, blah, 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 fucking back up, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, fuck. Same thing happens. I go out there, fucking... Nothing. At that time when the bus is leaving, I get on the bus, I leave. So I go home and I tell my dad, I say, man, two days in a row, this kid, he's threatening to beat me up. And da, da, da. My dad's like, well, why don't you get off the bus and fucking fight him? I was like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I guess I'm scared. I don't know. So my dad's like, look, tomorrow you see this kid. Don't even give him a chance. Like right there in the school, in the middle of the school, just run up to him and fucking punch him in the face in front of all his friends and everybody in the school. Just crack him. I'm like, okay, that's what I got to do. Okay. So now me and my dad, this is after school, go to do that paper route that I was telling you about. We go to the paper room and we see him and the two kids, the younger one that was fucking instigating the whole thing, and another kid walking on the bike path. So my dad, I see him and said, Dad, there they are right there. He's like, and pulls the car over, gets out of the car, and fucking, we walk up to these three kids. There's three of them, though. My dad goes, you two. My dad was a big dude at the time. You two, get the fuck over there. You, you, fight right now. So I walk up to this kid and I put my hands up. I'm like, let's go. And this kid or had no one around, and he had two guys with him, so they could have gotten to me, and I'm sure my dad wouldn't have let it happen, but they could have got the jump on me real quick, backed down. Not a single punch was thrown. Not one. And he started saying, well, this is because Moses got in trouble, because, and, and this was the kid that was standing there too, like, pa, 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 and he's just, he's talking all kinds of shit, because I'm standing there face to face with him, eye to eye, like two inches away from his face, pushing him with my chest, butting him with my head, being aggressive towards him. He backed down, he was like fucking 100 pounds heavier than I was. I mean, it was insane the amount of, like, it just changed like that. And, you know, I kind of stepped back and I'm like, you know what? You're not worth it. You're such a little fucking pussy. Look at your friends. Look at your fucking hero over here. Look at him. He won't even fucking fight. What do you think of him now? And they're just standing there like, you know, kind of looking around and like, maybe the whole thing was a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. I'm like, what the fuck? But from that day on, there was no problems. You know, people knew that not only was I going to stand up for myself, because word spreads very fast in that town, in that school that... I'd get them on the bike path where no one could hear them scream and they wouldn't be allowed to get away and they all backed down, all three of them. And people from that day on were like, holy shit, Jerry's got some balls at least. At the very least, he's crazy. And if something did happen, his cousin Christopher would have fucking come out of nowhere and fucked them up. It just, there's too much to handle. Leave him alone. And at that point, I had respect and I had some self-confidence that I said, wow, you know what? This, was, this really makes me feel good about myself that I can stand up for myself, and I don't have to fucking be scared. Even if, you know, worse came to worse, you know, I got beat up in the bathroom. What happened from that? What do I have to be scared of? I get punched in the head a couple times, I get kicked in the ribs a couple times, so the worst case scenario is I get a broken bone? Fucking who cares? Like, it just didn't make any sense. It was being scared hurt more than the actual fight itself. Okay, like, being scared to stand up for yourself, and the thought of what might happen, and the unknown of what might happen, is actually worse. That fear is actually worse than actually taking the beating itself, the physical beating. The beating hurts less. So as long as you can kind of sidestep that fear and stand up for yourself, fucking do it. Plain and simple. I mean, it's the best thing that I ever did when I was a kid. And, you know, kids think that things are a lot bigger than they are. And they are to the kid, okay? That was a lot bigger deal than what goes on in the world every day when you, you grow up and you graduate high school. But those things that are, you know, like, oh, my God, I can't wear this shirt to school. I'm going to look like an idiot. You know, parents go, stop it, just go to school. To kids, those are big things, okay? Fitting in, being popular, you know, having friends, you know, enjoying that, that school experience is important to kids. And it does lay the foundation for further things in life. I say all the time, I would love to go back to school because it was such a great time in my life. High school was a fucking great time. I didn't like doing the work, but I loved everything else that went on about school. The sports, the friends, the school dances. I mean, if I hadn't stood up to those kids, I might not have gone to school dances because they would have been there. And they might have wanted to beat me up, and I would have been scared. Instead, now I fucking held my head high and walked into that dance with whatever girl I was dating or taking to the fucking dance on my arm fucking with a smile on my face. You know what I mean? I played sports. I played football. I wrestled. You know, all that stuff could have been, could have never happened 
because I'm not saying it wouldn't have never, but it possibly could have never happened if I had never stood up for myself. So stand up for yourself. Don't take the initiative to just go fucking find anyone and beat the shit out of them. But someone steps to you, stand up. Training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. <laughs> but fight. Fuck it. <laughs> www.biosetraining.com is a blog and where it's a bully beatdown bicep. And we're out.